Let me give you a problem. You're on a ship, a ship of pirates. You are the pirate captain, and after brutally massacring a nearby cruise ship, you have collected a bountiful supply of treasure, exactly 500 gold coins. As pirate captain, you are given full responsibility for how to divide all this treasure between you and your four pirate employees. Call them what you'd like, their names don't matter, after all, they're not real. However, due to recent disputes between captains and pirate unions, there are new rules which mean you can't divide it however you like anymore. Instead, after you divide the treasure amongst your crew, if the majority of them disagree with your distribution, they throw you in the sea. And the second in command becomes the new captain. He then gets to decide how the gold is distributed with the same rules. Anyway, here is the question. What's the most amount of gold you can get for only yourself without dying? First of all, I should clarify a few things. For one, all of the pirates in the problem are perfectly logical, and much like you, hopefully, they'd rather be left alive at the end of showing the gold out than dead. Assuming that's met, they'll want the most amount of gold possible. Secondly, there are no alliances, you all suck, you all hate each other. Thirdly, if a vote goes to deadlock, i.e. two people vote in agreement with a distribution system and two people vote against it, the vote agrees with the system and the gold is spread out in that manner. After all, the disagreement needs to be in the majority. Finally, if a pirate realises that they will get the same amount of gold whether they vote yes or no on a vote, but if they vote no, someone dies, they'll vote no every time. After all, they're pirates. Not exactly the most ethical profession. Tends to be a bit murdery. Anyway, yeah, um, see how much gold you can get. I will wait a bit. Do you have an answer? Cool. Well, um, if you've got anything apart from this, you're wrong. Sucks to be you. To the rest of you, well done. You've earned yourself the feeling of accomplishment and a sense of self-worth. These are the most valuable prizes. But Alex, I hear a few of you asking, how is it possible that you as head pirate may obtain 498 out of 500 gold? Surely this cannot be the answer. To which I say, You're calling me a liar? Fight me, bruv. I'll wreck you. Also, yes, it is the answer. Let's change the problem, and instead of there being five pirates, there's only one. Just the fifth pirate. Assuming he's not, like, incredibly bad at thinking, he'll probably give himself all 500 of the gold, and vote to agree with this distribution. After all, there's no one to disagree with him. Now, let's up the number of people to two. The fourth pirate, and the fifth pirate, with the fourth pirate in charge. See, the fourth pirate could give the fifth pirate some money if he wanted to, but then again, the fifth pirate can't really do anything if he ends up disagreeing with the fourth pirate system. After all, if he disagrees with the system, the vote is a 50-50 split and still passes, as, remember, there needs to be a majority in opposition for the vote to be lost. Which means the fourth pirate can give himself all 500 of the goals, and there's nothing that number 5 can do about it. However, what happens if we add a third pirate? Well, if number 3 tries to give himself all the gold, pirates 4 and 5 would know that their personal outcomes would be better if they vote no and throw number 3 overboard. Pirate 4 will be able to gain all 500 of the gold when there are only two people left, as was shown earlier, and Pirate number 5 gets to witness a murder. Again, not nice people. However, 5 would still get no gold, so 3 realises it might be possible to buy his vote by giving him slightly more gold than he would get under Pirate 4, and as 1 is slightly more than 0, 3 can buy number 5's vote by giving him just one gold piece. Let's up the number of pirates to 4 now. This time, the new person in charge, Pirate 2, can't buy Pirate 5's vote with one gold piece, as he'll still get one gold piece with only three people left. However, he also realises that Pirate 4 will get no gold with only three pirates left. Therefore, number 2 can buy number 4's vote with one gold piece, and once again, the vote goes to 50-50 deadlock, with the vote being passed. Finally, there's you, the final pirate, the pirate captain. Under Pirate 2's leadership, numbers 3 and 5 would get absolutely nothing, so you realise that if you give them, and only them, one gold coin each, you have enough votes to pass your system of spreading the gold, leaving you with a magnificent total of 498 gold coins. This problem is an example of a maths topic known as game theory, i.e. the study of mathematical models of conflict and cooperation between intelligent, rational decision makers, and is a topic that incorporates a whole host of other subjects such as psychology, economics, philosophy, computer science, politics, etc. The way this problem was solved was with a method known as backwards induction, a procedure often used in game theory where you start at the end or final stages of a problem and work backwards until you find the best solution. And finally, our answer is an example of Nash equilibrium, i.e. a solution where no matter so what people in the problem do, they cannot single-handedly obtain a better outcome for themselves. Anyway, uh, hopefully this mild introduction to the topic of game theory has amused you sufficiently, but remember, if there's one thing you take away from this, do not hang out with pirates. They are very murdery. Very bad influence.